If you hate Jesus, then just keep scrolling. But if you love Jesus, then stick around and watch until the end. God is saying to you today, in the realm of existence, I, the divine, cast my compassionate gaze upon my beloved followers. I see the struggles and challenges that have beset you, and I offer my words of comfort and blessing. Beloved spirits, as you traverse the intricate tapestry of life, know that I am with you always, guiding your steps and cradling your heart. In the darkest of hours when the weight of the world feels overwhelming, remember that my love and radiance are your loyal companions. This week, I grant you my divine blessing, a gift from the heavens to uplift your spirits and ease your burdens. May the following words be a guiding light of hope and encouragement to illuminate your path. Day 1. Faith and Determination in the Face of Adversity May your faith remain unshaken. Draw from the well of inner strength that resides within you, for you are more resilient than you realize. With unwavering resolve, you can conquer any challenge that comes your way. Day 2. Love and Empathy Let love be the guiding force in your life. Extend empathy to yourself and others, for in acts of kindness, you find comfort. Remember that love is the greatest healer, mending wounds and uniting hearts. Day 3. Tenacity and Persistence Life's trials may test your resolve, but know that your tenacity is boundless. Keep your gaze fixed on your goals, and with unwavering determination, you will overcome obstacles and emerge triumphant. Day 4. Thankfulness and Plenty In the midst of difficulties, find gratitude for the blessings that surround you. Embrace the abundance that life offers, for even in adversity, there are lessons and gifts waiting for your discovery. Day 5. Bravery and Fearlessness When fear creeps into your heart, summon the courage that lies within you. You are a warrior of the spirit, capable of facing your fears with unwavering determination. Fear shall not deter you. Day 6. Recovery and Rejuvenation In the embrace of my divine light, find healing and renewal. Let go of the wounds of the past, for each new day is an opportunity for a fresh start. May your spirit be rejuvenated and your heart be complete. Day 7. Divine Guidance and Safety Know that you are never alone, for my divine guidance and protection are ever-present. Trust in the path that unfolds before you, for it is divinely ordained. You are watched over and cared for. Beloved spirits, as you move forward into the coming week, carry these divine blessings in your heart. Let them be a source of inspiration and strength, a reminder that you are cherished and supported from realms beyond. Day 8. Optimism and Hope as you step into a new week, may hope and optimism be your constant companions, even in the face of uncertainty. Trust that brighter days are on the horizon. Your positive perspective will pave the way for fresh opportunities and possibilities. Day 9. Unity and Concord. Seek unity and harmony in your relationships and interactions with others. Embrace the power of understanding and forgiveness. By fostering unity, you create an atmosphere of peace and cooperation. Day 10. Inner Peace and Calm Amid the chaos of life, find moments of inner peace and serenity. Take time to connect with your inner self, for it is in these moments of serenity that you will discover your true essence and purpose. Day 11 insight and wisdom. Open your heart and mind to receive wisdom and insight. 
Trust your intuition, for it is a channel through which I communicate with you. Seek knowledge, and it will light your path. Day 12. Courage to embrace change. Change is a constant in the tapestry of existence. Embrace it with courage and adaptability. Change is the force that propels you forward on your journey, revealing new opportunities and horizons. Day 13. Abundant Blessings. Acknowledge the abundant blessings that surround you, from the warmth of the sun to the kindness of a friend. Blessings are always present. Gratitude for these blessings will amplify their presence in your life. Day 14. Your Divine Calling. Reflect on your divine calling, the unique mission that only you can fulfill. Know that every step you take, every choice you make, is a part of this grand design. You are an integral thread in the fabric of creation. Day 15. Embracing Joy and Laughter. On this day, let joy and laughter be your companions. Embrace the simple pleasures of life, for they are the sparks of happiness that brighten your journey. Share your laughter with the world and watch as it multiplies. Day 16. Respect for all life. Respect and reverence for all life are virtues to hold dear. Recognize the interconnectedness of all beings, for in that realization lies the key to peace and harmony on this earth. Day 17. Overcoming Challenges. In the face of adversity, remember that challenges are the stepping stones to growth. With unwavering determination, you shall conquer the mountains that lie before you. Your strength knows no bounds. Day 18. Forgiveness and Healing. Release the burdens of the past through forgiveness. As you forgive others and yourself, healing shall wash over you like a gentle cleansing rain, and you shall emerge lighter and freer. Day 19. Trusting Divine Timing. Trust in the divine timing of your life. What may seem like delays are, in fact, opportunities for perfection. Your journey is guided by the celestial clockwork, and all shall unfold in due course. Day 20. Acts of Kindness. Engage in acts of kindness, both great and small, for they are the seeds of compassion that you sow. Each act ripples outward, creating a world where love and kindness flourish. If you hate Jesus, then just keep scrolling. However, if you love Jesus, then stick around and watch until the end. God is saying to you today, if you're reading this, you'll be okay. Wealth will come, you'll recover, love will find you, life will turn out better than you envisioned. Stay optimistic, believe all is fine. You are very close to a breakthrough. You have no inkling of the blessings on their way to you. Just see past your current reality. Believe in magic, believe in miracles, and so it shall be. Believe that things can suddenly change for you. Don't worry about how and when, just deeply believe in the possibility of a new outcome. It can all be so different from what you're currently experiencing. Nothing is ever set in stone. Allow that to bring you peace and give you hope. You will step into one of the finest chapters of your life where nothing can stop you. All the money you spent will return multiplied. Real love and success will manifest. You're too fixated on the how. When the ego clings to the how things happen, it creates resistance which then obstructs that thing or person from coming into your life. Have a vision for what you intend and let go of how it occurs. It could manifest in a far more magical way than you think. You're moving toward a phase of abundance, 
So stop worrying about money and let your angels care for you. The next seven days will be extraordinary. You are entering a season filled with happiness, love, and harmony. Anticipate improvements in your business life, spiritual life, and romantic relationships. You are attracting your soul family, real love, financial abundance, authentic relationships, good health, paid bills, and healing. What's meant for you will occur in an unexpected and inexplicable way. Nothing can hinder it. Focus on your vision, believe in it. It's all happening for you. Close your eyes and imagine yourself living the life you desire. See it, feel it, smell it, and focus on the details. Now, open your eyes and expect miracles to manifest your vision into reality. You're starting to expand, to think differently, to move in a new way. You can't quite explain it, but you know this is your time. The entire universe is on your side. Everything in your life will start moving forward. You'll experience a shift from stagnation to flow, from scarcity to abundance, from confusion to clarity, from pain to peace. This is the turning point. Don't be surprised when it comes true. In just a few short months, you'll be living your dream life. It's already written. Save this in your drafts. Sounds are very influential. Don't risk skipping them. Your thoughts are like magnets. You have the power to attract positive energy and repel negative energy. The more positive thinking you engage in, the more positivity you'll receive. The same holds for negative thoughts and negative energy. Decide what kind of energy you want today and remind yourself of all the things that elevate your vibration. You can show superb support for our channel. Type Amen to affirm. Angels are saying to you God is turning that no into a yes. Your waiting period has expired. The delay is over. Access has been granted. You're stepping into a higher dimension of blessings. Your faith has set you up to reap big rewards. I declare you will hear, you've got the job. You are healed. You've been approved. You passed the test. You are expecting. You've been accepted. God is going to do some amazing things. Don't waver in your faith. Don't give up the fight. Don't quit. You will win. You will succeed. You will prosper. God is with you. When you can't trace him, trust him. Amen. With a heart full of gratitude and thankfulness for your immeasurable grace upon my life, I acknowledge you. Your grace has sustained me through all trials and has brought me out of deep waters. I thank you for the gift of life and every blessing that you have bestowed upon me. Your grace has provided for me, protected me, and guided me every day of my life. Thank you for your unconditional love and for the forgiveness of my sins. I pray that your grace will continue to abound in my life and that I will continue to grow in faith and love for you. Thank you, Lord, for your amazing grace. You are a survivor. A lot of people do not know everything that you've gone through. Very few know. But God continues to pick you up every time. He has never failed you yet, and He will not fail you this time. You don't even look like what you've been through. And the good news is that God is not through with you yet. With God, all things are possible. What He started, He's going to finish. You're not too old. It's not too late. You haven't missed too many opportunities. You're right on schedule. Your dream is coming. Your healing is coming. Your breakthrough is coming. God is about to blow your mind and the minds of those who wrote you off. Please cleanse my thoughts of anger and worry. I know that worry is not your will for me. Please provide for all my needs as you promise in your word. I give to you all my fears, 
cares and troubles, as you have told me to do. Bring peace and comfort to my heart and help me to rest in you. Forgive me of any sins I have committed today and fill my heart LC135 with your love. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the new morning you have granted me. As a new day begins, I pray for your abundant grace and blessings. Guide me on the path of righteousness and love. Grant me wisdom and strength to face the challenges ahead. May my words and actions reflect your glory and love, bringing hope and comfort to those around me. Protect and bless my family and friends. May they dwell in your embrace of love and peace. I surrender this day into your loving hands. May your will be accomplished in my life. Thank you for hearing my prayer. When you make a decision to focus forward and move on, expect to meet resistance. The enemy does not want you to step into the promises of God for your life or to fulfill your purpose, so he will do whatever it takes to discourage, distract, delay, disappoint, or destruct you. You will have to fight to control your thoughts, guard your heart, and strengthen your soul. It's often easier to give up than to keep believing, hoping, and expecting for your breakthrough to happen. This is called a fight of faith because that's exactly what it is. The enemy plays dirty, that's why you feel like throwing in the towel. It's hard. It's messy. It's exhausting. It's discouraging. But I'm here to remind you that greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. The enemy is a defeated foe. Fix your eyes on Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of your faith. Living life without regrets doesn't mean you never hesitate, make mistakes, or second-guess your decisions every once in a while. In fact, living life without regrets requires you to do all of these things. It means stepping forward, even when you're afraid choosing courage over fear, accepting the lessons that come with defeat. It means not running from the pain that transforms you and reveals the beautiful messiness of being human. Feeling your own heartbreak because you had the courage to love fiercely and wholly without any guarantees that you'd receive that same love in return. It means being willing to face rejection, failure, and uncertainty without letting the fear of these experiences stop you from ever trying. It means seeking growth and transformation even when it'd be more comfortable to stay the same. Living life without regrets doesn't mean you don't sometimes wonder what would have happened if you'd made a different choice. But you don't live in that space. You live here, in this moment with the breath that flows through you right now. Never moving backwards. Never lessening the experiences that have shaped you. Never apologizing for a life fully lived. Something beautiful happens when you stop waiting to be chosen and instead choose yourself. When you love yourself first. When you can be alone with the shape of yourself. When you stop running away from your truth, the right people start to show up. The right opportunities suddenly align. All the hustling you were doing, trying to make yourself more worthy, stops feeling right, and instead you get into the flow of life. And everything you thought you'd have to earn and strive for seems to come a lot more easily. When you choose you, everything and everyone has to rise to that level and all the good things you thought you'd have to force arrive in perfect timing. Yes, you need to show up. Yes, you need to work. But it'll be with the right people, the right opportunities, and the kind of life that lights you my from the inside. Because you are lit up from the inside. What you want also wants you. But it can't find you. You're hiding in the shadows, giving away your power, 
wearing a disguise to conceal your true self. It can't find you if you're pretending to be something you're not. Abundance can't find you if you're hiding behind scarcity. Love can't find you if you're hiding behind self-loathing. Peace can't find you if you're hiding behind worry. Your dreams can't find you if you're dimming your own light. It's time for you to step out of the shadows, to release everything you're carrying that doesn't belong to you. Lack, worry, unworthiness, stress, fear, self-criticism, that feeling of never being enough. You are more than worthy, more than enough, more than you've ever allowed yourself to believe. So step forward, shine your light, allow everything you've been seeking to find you. Woke up this morning with such a sense that God is doing a new thing and I don't want to miss it. There are so many things we don't understand, so many things we simply don't know, so many things that are unjust, so many things that are disappointing, so many things that are devastating, so much pain, suffering, discouragement, fear, and doubt. And also, in the midst of it all, God is still speaking, God is still moving, God is still answering prayers and inviting us to go deeper with Him. I've decided to keep following, keep moving forward, keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking, keep believing, and keep hoping. Instead of focusing on what I don't know or understand, I'm focusing on who I do know, love and trust. Jesus is always faithful. We are on the edge of something. Don't get stuck here. Press on. Telling someone God bless you after he or she sneezes has for many of us become a nearly unconscious reflex, a need to fill the awkward silence after an abrupt and alarming sound. The ritual has entirely lost its significance for many. Yet for anyone paying attention to the things of God, it's amazing to recount all the references to the divine in mundane circumstances. For instance, the term holiday comes from the combination of holy and day, denoting a significant day of liturgical observance. Even the word goodbye is short for the phrase God be with you. But consider this. Although habits like saying God bless you are now largely habitual, if we are mindful about what we're saying, moments like these can serve as a reminder to stop and truly connect, even if only briefly, with God and the people we're blessing. Repentance and faith are the gifts of God and are not in a man's own power, and that if anyone flatters himself he can repent at his own time, choose his own season, seek the Lord when he pleases, and, like the penitent thief, be saved at the very last. He may find at length he is greatly deceived, and it is good and profitable to bear this in mind. There is an immense amount of delusion in the world on this very subject. I see many allowing life to slip away, all unprepared to die. I see many allowing that they ought to repent, but always putting off their own repentance. And I believe one grand reason is that most men suppose they can turn to God just when they like. They rest the parable of the laborer in the vineyard, which speaks of the eleventh hour, and use it as if it never was meant to be used. They talk of the thief that went to paradise and was saved and forget the one who died as he had lived and was lost. If you need God to open doors, send a financial breakthrough and heal every you're hurting this morning, say Amen. May you rise up today with the full assurance that God has your back. He is with you, for you, and actively working on your behalf. He does for you what you cannot do for yourself. May you do for Him the one thing you can do. Trust Him with your whole heart and embrace joy along the way. Grace and peace to you today. 
May God himself restore to you something you lost and never thought you would get back again. May he bring a sudden breakthrough on a long-awaited heart cry. May he heal a soul wound you thought you would never get over. May he pour out an abundance of joy and hope that makes you celebrate before the answer comes. And may thriving, rich faith mark your life in every way. You have access to the Most High God. May you live accordings. May God give you a burst of energy to tackle the tasks that you need to get done. May He inspire you to turn up the radio and dance in your kitchen. May He fill you with such joy that you suddenly realize just how rich you really are. May He connect you with an old friend and bless you with a new friend. And may He use you in surprising ways to be a blessing to everyone you meet today. Have a bursting with joy day today. May God remove every hindrance that keeps you from knowing His love in a way that changes you. May He change every circumstance that sends a lying message to you. May He highlight every trial He is using to train you into a warrior. And may He remind you that all of heaven is on your side. You are very close to His heart. May the Lord establish in you a healthy divine rhythm of life. May He strengthen you in mind, body, and spirit. Where you're broken, may He restore. Where you're weary, may He refresh. Where you're fearful, may He revive faith. May your coming days be far more blessed than your former days. Sleep well tonight. There'll be new mercies waiting for you in the morning. Dear Lord, as I start another day in my life, I pause to lift up prayers of thanks and praise to you. Thank you for the gift of life, and thank you for blessing me with another chance to show my love for you. Your mercy knows no bounds, and your unconditional love is something I could never fully understand or fathom. As I begin the day ahead, please fill me with the peace and courage necessary to face all that it may bring. Guide my heart and my mind so that everything I do is according to your will. Help me stay mindful of your presence throughout this day so that every intention set and action taken is for the purpose of glorifying your name. Amen. Dear Lord, today I come to you asking for strength, courage, gifts of energy, and enthusiasm that I can use to make a difference in the world. Push aside my thoughts of doubt and insecurity and help me find the clarifying peace that comes from knowing what truly matters in life. Guide my actions so that everything I do is in agreement with your truth and love. Give me the grace to never forget your unconditional love and promise of guidance when walking through the darkest paths of life. Lord, bring about harmony, kindness, and joy into my life as I strive to reflect your will as it impacts all around me. May your unfailing light guide me as I strive for this day with dread and faith filled in my heart. Amen. I believe this is going to be a wonderful day. I believe I can successfully handle all problems that will arise today. I feel good physically, mentally, and emotionally. It is wonderful to be alive. I am grateful for all that I have had, for all that I now have, and for all that I shall have. Things aren't going to fall apart. God is here and He is with me, and He will see me through. I thank God for every good thing. Suffering is the greatest treasure on earth. It purifies the soul. In suffering we learn who is our true friend. True love is measured by the thermometer of suffering. Jesus, I thank you for the little daily crosses, for opposition to my endeavors, for the hardships of communal life, for the misinterpretation of my intentions, for humiliations at the hands of others, 
for the harsh way in which we are treated, for false suspicions, for poor health and loss of strength, for self-denial, for dying to myself, for lack of recognition in everything, for the upsetting of all my plans. Thank you, Jesus, for interior sufferings, for dryness of spirit, for terrors, fears, and uncertainties, for the darkness and the deep interior night, for temptations and various ordeals, for torments too difficult to describe, especially for those which no one will understand, for the hour of death with its fierce struggle and all its bitterness. I thank you, Jesus, you who first drank the cup of bitterness before you gave it to me in a much milder form. I put my lips to this cup of your holy will. Let all be done according to your good pleasure. Let that which your wisdom ordained before the ages be done to me. I want to drink the cup to its last drop and not seek to know the reason why. In bitterness is my joy, in hopelessness is my trust. In you, O Lord, all is good, all is a gift of your paternal heart. I do not prefer consolations over bitterness or bitterness over consolations, but thank you, O Jesus, for everything. It is my delight to fix my gaze upon you, O incomprehensible God. O uncreated beauty, whoever comes to know you once cannot love anything else. I can feel the bottomless abyss of my soul, and nothing will fill it but God himself. I feel that I am drowning in him like a single grain of sand in a bottomless ocean. I truly believe in the power of hope. Forgiveness is an act of hope, because what we hope for, with faith, God will grant. Hope never disappoints. Furthermore, when we forgive someone, we set that person free of revenge or judgment. But it's not only the other person we set free, it's also ourselves. Every time that I forgive somebody, I set myself free. What happens when we don't forgive? If someone did something wrong to me 10 years ago, and I still don't want to forgive them 10 years later, it means I am held prisoner by my past. It is as though a chain is holding me 10 years in the past. I am not free to receive the graces of today. We are not free in regards to the past when we have not forgiven. We can't receive the graces of the present moment, all the blessings God wants to give us. We can't receive them because we are attached to our past by this refusal of forgiveness. What does it mean not to forgive? It means that I'm holding a grudge, a judgment, sometimes a hatred in my heart. And this poisons my heart. My heart is not pure. It is not free. It's as if I'm carrying poison in myself. This does harm to me for many reasons. Again, it keeps me in a condition of dependence. On the contrary, when I forgive, I am free. I am no longer in this state of dependence. I can be completely myself, and I can allow the grace of God to dwell in me. I can allow positive thoughts and hopes instead of stirring up a poison in myself. Forgiveness sets me free. Be encouraged to ask for the grace of forgiveness and practice it. Life is this constant web of events that provoke us. Life is this constant dialogue with the mystery who provokes us, who calls us through the things that happen. As we said, everything that happens is for our maturity. Therefore, Jesus continues to call, he continues to knock on our door, and all of my previous refusals to be open don't necessarily make me close up also now. I have to decide once again, who, for example, isn't struck once again in front of a beautiful day, even when he is really angry at life. You have to decide again, or in front of a gratuitous gesture. One can be as angry as he wants, but he cannot avoid the repercussions in front of its beauty. We all know it very well. We have to decide again each time, 
because this is the fundamental affirmation of the concept of the I we defend each time we speak. Otherwise, we would get stuck, defined only by antecedent factors, whichever ones, censoring that there is an I that is constantly challenged. This is why each time, this is the drama, we have to decide if our answer will be an acceptance or a denial and a refusal. For this reason, says the letter to the Romans, we are not guilty just once, because we constantly have to renew our decision of rejecting every initiative of the mystery one after the other. This is why the game is open until the last instant, as we see in the episode of The Good Thief. He may have said no his entire life, but then be open at the last minute. This is freedom. This is the I. This constant possibility to be open is part of the concept of the I. This is why Jesus says that to everyone who has, more will be given, because this individual lives constantly open to receive, while to the one who has a closed attitude, even what he thinks he had will be taken away. This is not because the mystery is not available or he is angry with us and wants to make us pay for it. No, it is because we have to decide constantly. The question is always open. Now, this surely is a very true interpretation of the purpose of Holy Communion. It is to give me the courage to persevere. Too often, probably to me, has come the same swift change from presumption to despair. Perhaps I had thought that I had finally quelled some temptation or sin that had long bothered me. A chance sermon or a passage in a book or the remark of a friend, and at once the old world has come back to me. Or it may be that it was some trifling but frequent failure that for long distressed me and then was for a time overcome and driven from power. Always, however, the result was that, however successful for the moment, I found myself ultimately returning whether I had first begun. All the exceptional efforts and fierce resolutions and elaborate addition of prayers, all the feeling of having done great things, ended at best in a respite, which, after all the stress, appeared a complete victory. I thought to myself that the battle in that part of the field had been won, that I could rest now without precautions or guards. Then swiftly has come my fall, although months may at times elapse before my undoing is manifest. But all the same, the effect in my soul is a quick despair. What is the use of struggle if it always ends in defeat? I find myself utterly weary hopeless. The old faults are still there unconquered, at least not slain. Now it is just at this moment of discomfiture that I need the voice of God's angel to call me to the bread and the wine, for I have always yet a long way to go. By no means has the end come. Rather, because of my weariness and dismay is my need for the food more urgent that in that externally provided help I may walk the rest of my appointed path. Courage is my greatest requirement, and it is here I shall find it. When God finds an inclination of the will, in the souls of those who have resolved to serve Him with sanctity and total justice, He does not leave them long at rest. Unexpectedly, he soon changes their manner of living so that they will no longer live as infants. He casts them out of his arms and pushes them away so that they may use their feet to walk and not be carried any longer. They break forth into tears and laments when their good nurse, divine providence, with as much wisdom as love, absents herself from them by suspending her communications but this is done to convert all their tenderness into strength, their weakness into power, and their daintiness into vigor. Later on, whenever they are driven ashore or the wind of the Holy Spirit fails them, they will be able to apply their hands to the oars. 
God gives them lessons to learn, of which they understand nothing. The practices presented to them are unknown to them, and the paths by which they are led seem to them to go astray. They think they are walking in the midst of shadows in which they are lost. They seem to be stumbling at every step, and they think that they are going to fall headlong at the next step. What is even more wearisome to them is the displeasure they feel, which gives them no rest either by day or by night, and is increased by the fact that they are urged to work. They have to learn by experience that although God is not miserly about pouring the abundance of his sweetness into the bosom of his most faithful friends, far beyond anything that one might think, nevertheless he does not pledge himself to continue this course of action with them. On the contrary, by an adorable secret of his divine providence, he suspends the influence of his sweetness in order to test their constancy, to exercise their virtue, to render their humility more full of glory, to detach them from too great confidence in their own strength, to make them more dependent on his grace, to increase their charity toward him, and to dispose them for the perfect and sovereign union with majesty to which he wishes to raise them. Frequently I think about how important it is to know how to experience moments of pain, suffering, rejection, loneliness, failure, disappointment, and betrayal. These moments are all part of human life because they are part of human reality. At times our Lord wants us to participate in human suffering. We must develop our capacity to suffer and, simultaneously, to offer up this pain. To do this, it is necessary to tell God, to cry out to God, about our suffering, kneeling with our eyes fixed on the crucifix. We must develop this mentality, this way of confronting life, so that when we encounter the cross, we do not trivialize, diminish, or strip away the value of this precious moment in which Jesus allows us to share the pain of his cross by giving us a splinter. Pain is part of human life. We must not run away from it, cheapen it by venting about it to others superficially. We have a saying that's applicable to the moments of suffering and provocation. It consists of four main words, be silent, swallow, suffer, and then smile. When someone is corrected and justifies himself, the other young men tell him, you missed the boat. They're talking about the boat of maturity, of self-control, of the capacity to be silent and not answer back, and to suffer with dignity and in silence. I teach these things to our young men and women because they must be prepared. Their boss at work will not admit that he is wrong. Their husbands or wives will not want to be at fault. Their children will argue and talk back yet still someone will have to lose so that peace can reign. Yes, peace is more important than anything, and to know how to lose is our security. It is the mysterious school of the cross, of a God who did not explain it, but embraced it, experiencing it in. Sometimes those who seem most peaceful and secure in religious belief lack a deeper engagement with its truth. There is an absence of fire in the heart for the real mystery of God. The result is a kind of impermeability of soul to the actual difficulty of seeking God in his personal presence during a lifetime. Certainly the possession of correct belief and fidelity to it are indispensable for religious living. They are ordinarily a source of peace and inner certitude in the soul. But it is the passionate engagement with God that not only makes the life of faith costly, but allows it to deepen. We may be perplexed to hear that faith should bring difficulty to our soul. The opposite, it seems, should be the case. But that may not in fact be true. Despite what is often assumed, the entry into faith's greater comes for many souls 
after a threshold of struggle has been crossed. The struggle is not with a diminishment of faith, but rather with the effects of a deeper passion for God. This struggle is not sought. In no way is it a deliberate cultivation of doubt or questioning. The difficulty with becoming more passionate for God is that interior darkness often becomes a kind of an closer within which that passion must live. The darkness seems to cloud the gaze of faith when in fact it invites a more intense faith. The only option then is to believe more passionately and to pray with more pass sion, which usually means an unfelt passion of the soul. With this choice comes an increasing certainty that God is indeed quite near. Even blind and overcome by the night, the soul learns a different sense of the press, of God, which it cannot see or feel, but knows nonetheless. It senses this presence only in faith, a press outside feeling but returning, continually near. As love grows stronger, so does the desire to praise increase. It is always a sign of the weakening of love when we have less taste for praising a loved one. This is a good point of spiritual examination. If our love for God is growing less fervent and ardent, we have an inbuilt barometer to warn us. It registers less concern for praising Him. No, it is definitely not a rather bleak activity for all eternity, simply to praise. For one thing, the more we love a human being, and certainly the more we grow in the love of God, the more we seek praise. The person who loves very little does not see much to praise the other. Again, this is a test of our charity. If we do not observe much praise in our neighbor, one thing is certain— we do not know him well enough, love him well enough. If we come to love him more, we shall have our own reward of seeing more and more to praise. The heart that loves little always sees little or perhaps even nothing to praise. The heart that loves much will see something to praise where others may not. But there are qualities and characteristics of praise. Praise is always humble. This is prominently its very first attribute, because in praising another, we in some way situate ourselves below that person. Praise of its nature exalts the one praised, sets this respected person or this dear God or this loved friend above the one praising. By the mere act of praising, we assume a position of humility. We take a willing stance beneath another person peace, to permit the grace of God to act in us and to produce in us, with the cooperation, of course, of our will, our intelligence, and our capabilities, all those good works for which God prepared us beforehand, so that we might lead our lives in the performance of good works, F210. It is of the greatest importance that we strive to acquire and maintain an interior peace, the peace of our hearts. In order to understand this, we can use an image, without exaggerating, as we should always avoid doing in making comparisons. But one that can be, consider the surface of a lake above which the sun is shining. If the surface of the lake is peaceful and tranquil, the sun will be reflected in this lake. And the more peaceful the lake, the more perfectly will it be reflected. If, on the contrary, the surface of the lake is agitated, undulating, then the image of the sun cannot be reflected in it. It is a little bit like this with regard to our soul in relationship to God. The more our soul is peaceful and tranquil, the more God is reflected in it, the more His image expresses itself in us, the more His grace acts through us. On the other hand, if our soul is agitated and troubled, the grace of God is able to act only with much greater difficulty. All the good that we can do is a reflection of the essential good, which is God. 
the more our soul is peaceful, balanced, and surrendered, the more this good communicates itself to us and to others through us. The Lord gives strength to his pupil. The Lord blesses his people with peace, Scripture says, Pies 29.11. From the fall of Adam and Eve, there has been the tendency in human nature to be envious, to be jealous, to be unwilling to accept the greatness of others for fear it would diminish oneself. But it is not a very free thing that your fellow townspeople should want to throw you over the brow of the hill. Since Jesus was perfectly human, he felt this more deeply than any of us ever could. He was rejected by his own townspeople, whom he had come to save. He rose out of this. He simply passed through their midst. I think we can truly say he used his divine power to pass through their midst with a very aching human heart. He had to make an effort to rise. We want to reject all of those spiritual enemies that want to throw us from the brow of the hill. We want to be like our Jesus in that we rise again. We leave the field of temptation and rise in his victory. Then he certainly had to rise out of his seeming failures, even with his own. Many accepted him and many didn't. One of his very own, Judas betrayed him. Can we begin to fathom the depth of Jesus' suffering to have one of his own loved groups betray him, reject him? He rose out of that. He didn't dissolve his little community. He didn't leave them, but he rose out of this betrayal. Only when we ponder that can we understand the ag of his heart. We see him rise up and go forward. Since as Christians we now enjoy fullness of life in keeping with both the human nature which is ours by birth and the divine nature in which we participate by adoption in Christ, we are free to begin engaging our entire self as human beings. But in such a way that everything we are and have, not just intellect and will, but body and passions as well, serves the Lord as St. Paul writes to the Corinthians, the body is meant for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. You are not your own. You were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. All desires and loves, that is, can be region and transformed and made beautiful and fruitful by the power of the divine love, the agape, we have received by grace. This is the art of the Christian life, to learn gradually how to allow God's energy to make everything in us, everything serve the Lord who is love, to imitate our Mother Mary in praying her Magnificat unceasingly with full-souled joy. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. The Almighty has done marvels for me, and holy is his name. Mary's sinlessness means that no aspect of her being remains inactive in her obedient service, praise, and exaltation, and this is our vocation as well. Fear is a weakness and a strength, a sin and a virtue. For most, it is probably an evil, since human nature shrinks from present pain and is more vividly afraid of what more immediately threatens. For that reason, it would appear that man is more likely to be too much than too little, afraid in life. No doubt there are many who need to be more circumspect, more cautious, but these adventurous spirits are fewer in comparison than those who find in the life of the soul too much matter for depression and discouragement. Naturally, the real determinant as to whether fear is legitimate is to be sought in ascertaining the object of fear. Obviously, the whole question is, what exactly is it of which I am afraid? What signs can I look for to discriminate between the right and wrong fear? This surely is the infallible test. 
the fear that is really and truly from God should take me nearer and nearer to his feet, a fear that keeps me from his presence and holds me at arm's length from him can never be his gift. So then, the true fear of God should hold me to his love and his reverence. It must prevent me from turning away from the pathway of his commandments, nor should it further disturb the peace and serenity of my soul, nor torture my conscience, nor bruise the tender, ness of love or lead the enemies of God to speak of him reproachfully. I may know what is a false fear of God, for it will lead me from him. Open minds, creative spirits, and heroic initiatives are and always will be helpful. But what is necessary today are people who believe, who give their prayer and their suffering, as they did for foreign missions. We need people who offer, instead of a little money, the mending of our collective selfishness, our God-murdering selfishness. Our prayer will be genuine to the extent that it knows what we pray for. It will be genuine if, when praying for non-believers, we put right whatever it is in us that caused their non-belief. Wherever we might meet people who truly believe, whether it be at Mass on Sunday, in Children's Kate Chisholm, in prayer groups and in apostolates, we should ask them for this prayer, this suffering, and this conversion of the heart. We should teach them all, and again through the facts, how it is we got to where we are. Through the facts, always through the facts, through the infinitely various facts, we should show them all how we can repair this enormous collective sin, and we should do so in a way that corresponds to the age, capacity, and point of view of each of them. To say in every case, something new to someone new, and then it will seem impossible that God should not act as God, that Christ should not be proclaimed, and that his church, even here, should not continue to grow. Subscribe our YouTube channel to reach 30,000 divine subscribers soon. Please help us by sharing this video to 200 people, only if you love God Jesus. And share super thanks to make more video on our God Jesus, type amen to affirm thanks for watching